Hello and welcome to the Teapot Reads. My name is Sam. I'm the Teapot. This is what I am currently reading and I'm so happy to see you today. Hello and welcome. I'm willing to bet because this is a Barnes & Noble video a lot of you are not subscribers so welcome to my little corner of YouTube. My um, It's not really cozy necessarily. It's a little chaotic actually but welcome and I'm really happy to see you and maybe you'll consider subscribing based off this video. I have not done a Barnes & Noble video in a while partly because I didn't feel like I had anything else to add and partly because I just feel like I d a lot of my a lot of the traffic to my channel for a very long time was through my Barnes and Noble videos which is really great but I I don't want to just be doing like Barnes and Noble content I would like to be doing other like bookish content and have people interested in that as well it was sort of this war between like, I don't really have anything more to say, anything really interesting, anything new to add to what I've already said, and I want to do other videos. But finally I sat down and I was like, okay, I think I do want to do some more Barnes & Noble content. So there's going to be two more videos. This is one of them. This is going to be an updated day in the life because I have a new position since the last time I spoke to you directly about my position and what I did at work. And I also want to do a Q&A about working at Barnes & Noble. I will be doing that sometime in July. You are totally welcome to leave questions in the comments of this video and in the comments of any video I make and I try to answer them. I'm not super prompt all the time, but I do try to answer them. But the reason I want to make a Q&A video is so that I can actually send people over there if they have a lot of questions rather than just one that I can easy answer. So I'll be doing sort of an overview, an FAQ, a Q&A. If you have anything that you'd specifically like to hear about in that video, let me know in the comments that you'd rather have it answered in the video. Otherwise, I'll just be answering questions like I typically do in the comments of this one. Totally feel free. That's coming, like I said, in July. You can also message me on Instagram. Let me know that you have a comment or a question for the Q&A video. And I will also post a community thing on here on YouTube and in my Instagram stories when it comes time for that. I might also do something on TikTok. I'll have everything linked down below. What do I do at Barnes Noble? So if you work within the company, the position might sound a little more familiar, but if you don't, you're might have questions. I'm not sure if this is a universal type of job, but I am the ICS. I am the Inventory Cluster Support. So Barnes & Noble stores are sectioned off into clusters and the clusters are anywhere I think from like three to five stores typically and there are roles within those clusters that help all the stores. Like I have a home store and then I help three other stores through this role. I have multiple projects that I do throughout the year they're not always the same. It really shakes up. We're in the middle of a pretty big project right now. My typical daily routine is what I'm going to go through today. Basically, the ICS is responsible for replenishment of books in the store. I don't do front list ordering. I can, however, like look at the initial laydown of things and say, no, this store needs actually 10 more copies. And then I will order those 10 more copies, even if they already have like 20 on order or whatever. It, typically, my daily replenishment is looking at a program and seeing everything that sold that was a book the day before and deciding if they need more copies of it or if it's time to like let the book die or if they have plenty of copies right now so they don't need it and also deciding how many copies to bring in but I will get into that as I go through my day so it's a super interesting position it is sort of like it's not management because I'm not doing management of people although I am like a team leader just based on the fact that I've been there for a while and kind of know things that's going on. It is somewhat between like an office type job and on the floor being a bookseller because I do both every day. So the first thing I do is I clock in. That's pretty obvious. I take time to gather myself. I take out my notes. When I have more than I typically do, I like to write a little like to-do list because I need to like visually see it. Part of gathering myself includes checking emails and to be honest, unless it's urgent, I do not respond to emails until I've had my first break of the day. If it's urgent, definitely, I absolutely do. And I will sometimes send out emails early, but I don't like to respond. It's just like a, an anxiety thing. I also check the employee portal, which is called BN Inside, for any updates. And then I check my calendar that I keep. And this typically takes anywhere. It really depends how many emails I have. I would say on average about half an hour because assuming there's updates. Uh, then depending on the day, I either look at the sales for my cluster and sometimes the MSR, which is the merchandise sales report. This shows me what genres are selling well and it also gives me a really good overview, especially for the stores that I'm not in super regularly, how they're doing. Like is fiction selling better than it was? 
or is it going down? What's the inventory stock look like? Am I overloading them? Do they not have enough of something? So it's a really nice overview. Like I said, particularly for the stores I'm not in every day. Since I have a home store, I know that store really well. But the other three, even though I do visit, I don't... It's, it's hard to like, unless you're there every day, to like visualize where they're at. You know, you're just looking at numbers on the screen most of the time. But the MSR helps a lot. And I, I do like to snoop and just see like general sales for the cluster to see how we're holding up. This is like really helpful, particularly with more niche subjects like philosophy or wedding planning, because those are sections that you don't always think about and ordering can be kind of odd for the smaller sections. Something I do personally is I kind of keep a running chart on the computer I use of fluctuations and changes. So every week, I, or not every week, but most weeks I'll look and say like, okay, fiction sold this much. And then the next week I'll say, oh, they, they're at this much for the 13 week. Uh, sales history and then I'll be able to see like kind of what the fluctuations are and I make little charts sometimes if I need to like really really ID what's going on. If I have a lot of other things on my plate though this is not a top priority this is just if I have time to get it done and it's not going to take away from other things. Then I do the order this is the bulk of my day doing like ICS things. Ordering is done with a special program it allows me to see every sale that was made the previous day or the previous two days because I do have days off of course. Uh, if no one did the day before um, I do have someone who helps once a week or when I'm on vacation, but they're not doing the order every day I'm off because they get days off too. It's not their main job. With this job, I'm actually very lucky because even though it's retail, I get to choose the days I work and the hours I work. That does sometimes shift if I'm like, oh, I need to do this project or I need to be here, but I have pretty much complete flexibility. That's really nice. So the system I look at also shows me the sales of every of each channel through the last 12 months, which is sometimes really helpful when ordering books that sell fairly well throughout the year. I can look at, you know, trends that way if it is a book uh like personal growth tends to sell really well in the beginning of the year because it's a new year new year kind of mentality for a lot of people and also around graduation say season it sells really well but i could look at the thing and say wow we've just sold like 10 copies of the goggins book is that a fluke like is it because of the time of year or but then i would see like in the 12 months i'd be like no no it's a consistent bestseller like i know I know it's Goggins is gonna sell all the time, but that was just an example I used. But it's really nice to be able to see the 12 months and kind of see a pattern, whether it develops like seasonally, monthly, or if it's something that was like really hot for a while and has kind of petered off, like maybe it's time to not bring in so many copies of Daisy Jones. Other things I can see on this program are uh, the subject and the genre, seems like a dead giveaway, the ranking that is determined by the company, the amount of copies that are sold, like I said, release date. So if something is selling really quickly to its release date, I tend to order up because it means it's a hot topic book. Fourth Wing is a really good example of that right now because it is like selling off the shelves like immediately. And it has been even because it was an embargo, so we could put it out early. Uh, so it was selling even before it was officially released. So that was like a good like mental thing to be like, oh, I need to order a case pack of this. Like I, I, it's going to keep selling. I can also see things like, what else is really interesting? The last time it was brought into the store. So if it is a book that has maybe been sitting on the shelf for a while, like maybe it's taken two years to sell through all the copies that were brought in, maybe I bring in a lot less than were initially brought in. You know, maybe something that initially had five books, but it took two years to sell, only returns with one book, you know, that kind of thing. It's a lot of like little mental math and you just kind of fall into habits and patterns. And the more you work with books, not necessarily like in a professional capacity, but the more time you spend with books, you kind of just get an idea of what actually sells and what's important to have on the shelf. And like I said, I determine how many of each book to bring back into the store, if any. Not every book gets reordered every day, because something like a Colleen Hoover book, we have like 400 million in the store, I don't need to bring in more copies every day. The bulk of my work is doing this reordering and working at uh, the desk in the back. This, while it's the bulk of my ordering, when I do visit other stores for projects, I tend to race through the section as quickly as I can. On Mondays, it's typically a double order, so it's a very difficult day to do it on, but otherwise I can race through the orders in about two and a half hours, like two hours. A typical summertime order is like two hours, I think, if I'm like racing through it and just like here are the basic decisions. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> um, and that's when I'm typically visiting another store. And when I'm visiting stores, that typically takes up the majority of my day my shift is walking the store or doing whatever the project is and getting to know the store refamiliarize myself so that further orders are important and having discussions with the teams at those stores my first break of the day typically happens after i finish the orders on mondays that's earlier because like i said it is a double order same with the holiday season i'll do like two stores and then be like time for a break 
just like a, so you know a double order so like a typical day because i have high volume stores a typical day's order is like 300 plus books i'm looking at for each store with my highest volume store probably being, being closer to 500 books every day during the holidays that like triples and quadruples i think that there were days during the holidays where i had nearly two thousand books if not more because I, I know i've seen i want to say like 30 something pages and i do it like by 100 books per page so actually probably more like 3,000 books in a day sometimes I have very high volume stores so it's actually kind of nice I prefer working with um bigger volume than lesser because I'm sort of a maximalist can you tell in my life as well but I like to combine both my 15s because I'm working an eight and a half hour shift or eight hours plus like an unpaid lunch I get two 15s and a 30 and I like to combine both my 15s into a 30. I grab something to drink from the cafe typically and then I like to spend my breaks reading this is often the only chance I have during the day to actually sit down and read so even though it sounds a little antisocial, it is one of the most pleasant parts of my day after the orders are done and after I've taken my break, it depends on the day what I'm going to be doing. I always look at the team's conversation that's happening. I do actually wait till this point in the day because I figure if it's urgent, it's in my email. And if it's on teams, it might be something that I just want to investigate a little later and not necessarily be concerned about right off the bat. But then after that, a few things can happen. There could be meetings. This happens at least on Mondays and Tuesdays, although it does happen other days of the week. Sometimes there are meetings that I've set up with people. Sometimes there are meetings that are for my position specifically which happens about once a month sometimes it's like within the store meetings the company one on monday i have to do it is super important and it's actually very helpful to me because it kind of gives me a really good test of what is going on with the company and even though i'm not really a participant i i'm watching and it's very helpful most meetings run less than an hour although lately they've been running long just in general i've noticed meetings lately have been running long and i think it's because we are both more stressed and strapped for time but have so much going on that's like a collaborative at the moment that it makes it really hard to just like speed through but during the holidays like sometimes we would have like 10 minute meetings i was like what was the point of this during the summer it's a lot better on tuesdays i try to look at the nrp log which is the non replenishable log there's a couple things that when i'm ordering i have to keep in mind there are certain titles that are non replenishable which means that the company has not bought into them or has not typically bought into them. So sometimes there are non-replenishable books that when I request them on the log, they're, they're for like school reading. Sometimes a company can be like, yep, we can get those to you for whatever reason they can access them. So other times, and this is the big bulk of it, it is print on demand, which typically means self-published and self-published titles that the company loses money on by stocking. We're doing a lot better at having indie authors and self-published titles, particularly in romance. And I, I have seen it in horror and sci-fi to an extent, but it's it's romances, you know, control of this. You know, you see a lot of it, although a lot of those authors are switching over to more traditional publishers or at least publishers that give the company better terms like Bloom and Sourcebooks. But the NRP log is a place where I, if a store shortlisted, which I actually did not talk about. So each store is able to basically request the books that they want in store. Obviously, this would be impossible for someone in a store to do literally every day for every title. But if it's something that they want to put on display or that they want to make sure they keep stock of, or if it's something that they don't have that they want to bring into the store for whatever reason, they shortlist it, they request it, and I look at all those, I typically will be like, yep, for most of them. If it is something that seems really strange, that's when I tend to reach out. Or if it is something that is non replenishable, that's when I really sit there and consider is this actually worth? going through these extra steps knowing that the answer is probably no is it something i'd like be willing to fight for in that case and about 40 percent of the time i'm willing to fight for it but the other 60 percent of the time it's just a bad title that does not need to be brought in and probably the employee has done it has just like requested it because like a customer is standing right there and was like request it for me which happens a surprising amount of time but the nrp log is where i put in some of the shortlist requests and get to also just sneak through and look and be like okay well what are other people requesting and what are they not getting i'll be honest the nrp log don't typically get everything you ask for i think i get maybe one for every 10 titles i request and typically those are like school reads or for local authors the shortlisting system has a lot to do with the sort of company policy of trying to make each store really unique and almost mimic an indie bookstore though it's not 
obviously an indie bookstore. On Wednesdays, I look at the bestseller lists and any new releases that are coming out. This actually takes me a bit of time to do, so Wednesdays I try to do it for the most part. I like to, one, get a pulse for what is coming out and what might be popular, like what authors might have something coming out, and I try to look about a month in advance so that I have space and time to think about and prep for these and make decisions when ordering up and maybe on that author's backlist if it comes up in the system or something. I like to get that pulse and I also like to for hot ticket books or less hot ticket books but more like mid-tier books that I think would sell well anyways, I like to put them into my program and see okay well how many are coming, what's the initial laydown for these titles and do these stores need more. I will also if there's like a big book coming out typically send out an email to the stores that I order for and be like hey just so you know like Colleen Hoover has a collector's edition of It Ends With Us coming out in a month. You might want to prepare, consider any displays you might want to do or any backlist you might want to order up that you might not already have just so that they also have like an idea of what is coming. Although I don't do this every week it's really just for like big-ish releases that they might want to make sure they have their nose on and it's actually really <laughs> for me someone who's trying not to buy as many books but loves shopping for books. It's actually a little therapeutic. It's one of my favorite parts of the week. Then assuming everything else is done, it is time for my lunch. I have half an hour for lunch. I eat whatever I brought and then again spend the rest of the time reading. Again, sounds so antisocial but I actually do love this part of the day. And if someone is there and wants to talk, I will talk. I do get slightly annoyed. Um, shh. I don't mean that in a mean way. It's just unwind time a little bit. And then it is time to be on the floor. Uh, very typically I do regular customer service and shelving. If you saw my previous video, it's a lot more of that. It's helping customers over the phone. It is helping customers in person. It is building baskets and also answering questions and that kind of good stuff. I gravitate toward shelving nonfiction in the store, which is actually a different store than I used to work at. I change stores if you follow my vlogs or you watch my other content you've probably heard me mention that change it was because this position opened up at a store that was not my store so I did move stores and at this new store I gravitate toward shelving the nonfiction for a couple reasons one very few people typically enjoy shelving nonfiction. not a hard and fast rule but most people enjoy shelving the genres or if they like shelving nonfiction, it's like a very specific nonfiction that they read I don't mind shelving nonfiction. it actually gives me a really great idea of what is selling, what customers are looking at, what's faced out, what's interesting, what is grabbing people's attention. And I love being able to especially help. This is gonna sound so like weird, but I love when customers are like, I really need help finding this obscure like cookbook. And I'm like, I got you. I know exactly where it is. It is right here. And it just looks like an eco boost or something. I, it's great. I love it. When I started at this specific store, I wanted to be really helpful because it's a really strong team that really has uh, so many great strengths. And so I kind of slipped into nonfiction because I knew that was a really good opening. And because I have a really good idea of what the genre fiction, all that kind of stuff sells, I, I don't need as much help in like mentally like interacting with those kind of customers. Nonfiction is a weakness for me as a reader and so it just it, it helps with my position it helps me grow as I think a reader because I can be like yeah that is actually a book that I'm interested in now or I would not have found this book without it and I think it's it's just helpful for me it's helpful for the store it's an all-around win and I don't mind it but yeah my day is about 50 50 split between being behind the scenes in the office doing my work and then being on the floor I have a lot of flexibility with this job like I said with my hours with the days I work and it's a lot of responsibility but it is it's treated as a job with responsibility I never feel like I'm being um pushed to the side by people I do think there are the company is a type of machine that does not necessarily appreciate its employees because it is a company I think that's pretty much any retail type position. We're getting into a lot of thoughts that I want to talk more about in the upcoming Q&A video, such as my thoughts on the union, which I am full support. I think I've talked about this in the past. I support unions. All unions are good. A couple quick things because I think I'm going to get questions about this in the comments because I get these questions a lot. This was technically a promotion, but it was, it's not like the regular path of 
management or working in the store, the opportunity arose that this position was open and so I applied for it and was promoted into this position. It is not a management position, although like I said, I am a bit of a team leader and depending on the store, I'm sure it is more or less of a leadership position, but I don't have responsibility of running the store. If someone asks for a manager, that's not me. I am not the manager. I am not on the managerial team. Obviously, if I can help the customer, I will. But if they're like, no, the manager, I'm like, okay, sounds good. I also don't work in the cafe at all or behind the register unless there is some sort of emergency or a huge rush. Then I'll work the register. But actually, my position dictates that I shouldn't be doing those things or working and receiving. And I do kind of miss receiving. But I liked receiving a lot because I didn't have to deal with customers and working in the office half the day, I don't have to deal with customers. So it, it's not that much of a loss. But because my position is so reliant on knowing what the trends are and what the customers want, being out there on the floor with the customers is sort of the number one thing to do outside of doing the orders. Another question I'm sure I'm going to get is how much I make. I'll be honest, I don't remember the exact number. It's not very much. It's only like $2 higher than minimum wage if that, because um, minimum wage just raised in Illinois so actually um <laughs> it's, it's like a dollar fifty higher it's not great pay the discount is great um which I will talk more about the discount in the Q&A video but the discount is great and one of the reason I have stayed so much as well as the community at both stores I've worked at I've been very lucky to have a really great community of booksellers to work with and you know working with books is like a dream of mine I love it Obviously, I love it. I think that my position is a lit, little bit interesting in that it's not always explained to booksellers what the ICS is doing or what our rules are. Um, so especially if you are a bookseller and you have questions, feel free to ask. I would love to answer it. I think it's a really interesting position and I think if more people knew what it was and what it entailed would be interested in pursuing it. But anyway, that is it for me. That is my day in the life as um, an ICS as a bookseller at Barnes & Noble updated. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was interesting to you. Like I said, if you want to know more, definitely ask down below. And I will also be doing that Q&A video in, I think, July, although I might move it forward a little bit, just depending on some things happening in my own life at the moment. I am going to put this down in the box below, but I do not speak on behalf of the company. This is my experience with the company. That's important to know. And yeah, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. If you're not a subscriber, maybe consider. I'd really appreciate it. I post bookish content. I try to do weekly. It's not every week. I'm kind of getting things myself back together but I, I try to do every week and it's uh bookish all the time and if you are a subscriber thank you so much for being here i appreciate it so much to have you on the other side of this computer of this camera of this video watching listening and interacting with me it makes me just so happy and it makes me feel so seen thank you if you're somewhere cold i hope you're staying warm if you're somewhere warm i hope you're staying comfortable and most of all i hope you're reading a great book i will see you guys next time bye